Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, my understanding is that the best thing I can do now is uh, to let you ask questions and not to start saying anything, but just answer your questions. So I am I am ready. If you have some questions. If not, I can say some words. I can answer questions. Yeah. Yeah. I was told to do it in English. No. That's a lot of yeah. people here. Um, uh, looking at the situation in Afghanistan, how it's developed, uh, would you see it as more likely than before that you will have to stay longer than you anticipated? So we decided at our uh, uh, at the NATO summit in July to sustain our presence in Afghanistan, and uh, we did so because we uh, we 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 are ready to be a, uh, a long-term uh, partner, and we are uh, prepared for the long haul. Uh, meaning that we will uh, continue to support Afghanistan in different ways, uh, and we have decided to sustain funding for the Afghan army and the defense forces uh, to 2020. Uh, we then decided to maintain uh, our military presence in Afghanistan, and we are now uh, stepping up the political partnership with Afghanistan. There is no specific date, there is not, not a specific uh, timetable, uh, but uh, I think the decision this spring, uh, also at the NATO summit in July, uh, expresses uh, and is a sign of strong commitment by NATO allies and partners. And uh, the important message in a way is that, or part of that is that for many years NATO did combat operations in Afghanistan. Uh, and Afghanistan was uh, for many years our biggest military uh, operation in a combat operation. Uh, in 2015, uh, we handed over the responsibility for the security in Afghanistan to the Afghans themselves. And I strongly believe that this is a much more viable, much more sustainable uh, approach than we fighting their war uh, or fighting the wars for the, the war for them. Uh, enabling them to take responsibility, enabling them to defend their own country, to stabilize their own country. Is, is a much better strategy in the long run. And we have been quite, uh, there are many challenges and there are many risks and many disappointments and uh, still violence and still Taliban and still terrorist groups in, in Afghanistan. But at least we have enabled by training, equipping, funding the Afghan army and security forces, we have enabled them uh, to fight back themselves. So for instance, if this attack on Kunduz which I've seen this week had happened a couple of years ago, then it would have been NATO soldiers uh, that uh, would have been uh, engaged in combat uh, and uh, that uh, would have been deployed uh, in combat operations in Kunduz to repel the Taliban attack. Now it's the Afghans themselves, uh, supported or assisted and advised by, uh, by us, uh, uh, but not, not the NATO forces uh, in the first line of the combat uh, operations. So um, you will not have a date, but uh, because we don't have a date, but uh, I think what we have done over so many years, we have invested so much, and we have to make sure that we are just, uh, uh, living up to uh, our commitments, and, uh, and we have, at least we have, a, at least we have decided to continue the funding through 2020, uh, and, uh, and we have um, decided to maintain the military presence, and we are working on strengthening the long-term uh, partnership. Secretary General, can you tell us what do you know about the peace efforts? We heard from um, Federica Mogherini that she's trying to revive the peace process. Um, have you discussed this with um, the High Rep or John Kerry? What do you know? What can you tell us? So, I, that has been an item. I have many bilaterals. I have spoken with uh, uh, Dr. Uh, President uh, Ghani, with uh, Dr. Abdullah, with uh, met with Kerry, I met with um, uh, Federica, also High Representative Federica Mogherini, and, 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 and also with the Pakistani Foreign Minister. So I have many uh, uh, meetings during uh, the day uh, uh, here uh, at the uh, EU headquarters, uh, or this, uh, uh, also in connection with this con EU conference. Um, um, NATO strongly supports uh, the efforts uh, for uh, a peace process. Uh, 
uh, to find a political uh, negotiated solution, and we support uh, the, re the efforts to try to um, establish reconciliation or, or to obtain a reconciliation and a peace process. Um, uh, uh, there is a close link between NATO's support to the Afghan army and defense and security forces and the peace process. Uh, because there is no way the Taliban uh, will, uh, as I say, engage in a real peace process if they believe that they can have a military victory. So uh, one way of uh, 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 supporting the uh, peace process, the, uh, the efforts to reach reconciliation, is by making it clear that the Afghan forces are strong, are capable, are funded, so they can, so they are resilient, and uh, and uh, then Taliban and other groups uh, must understand that they will not win on the battlefield. Uh, they should engage in serious reconciliation uh, efforts. Uh, I welcome very much the agreement uh, between the uh, Afghan government and Haq uh, Matiyar or his. Islami uh, group, uh, but uh, uh, that's only the first step, and uh, uh, and again, uh, NATO's support for the Afghan armed forces is in a way the foundation, because without the strong army, uh, Afghan uh, the, uh, uh, security forces, there, there will be no possibility at all for a, a negotiated uh, solution. Morgan Cook from Associated Press. How, how do you assess the strength of the the Taliban right now, <clears throat> and the uh, and the resilience of the of the Afghan army to get a sense of what things are like on the battlefield, and then how does what's going on in here at uh, this kind of meeting impact on, on the ground? The Taliban is, is is still absolutely present in Afghanistan. Uh, they uh, and uh, and they are they have launched several attacks uh, as in a way we expected when we handed over the. The, the responsibility for the security to the Afghan uh, uh, Afghan also Af Afghan security forces back in 2015, um, and uh, I think it's also important to remember that there are uh, uh, many different groups, uh, also terrorist groups, uh, present in uh, Afghanistan. Uh, we have seen uh, Al Qaeda. We have seen uh, uh, so local. Uh, ISIS uh, or ISIL uh, uh, groups. Uh, uh, we have seen, of course, a lot of criminal networks, very much uh, as part of the Taliban, the drug traffic. So this is a very mixed and complicated picture with a lot of different groups, uh, which which uh, which uh, are, uh, what should I say, saying uh, paying loyalty to, to 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 different political directions, and also some of them are just criminal uh, drug networks. So, uh, of course, we, and, and, and we've also seen some high-profile attacks, for instance, in Kabul. Uh, and that's, of course, a reason for concern. We have seen that many people have lost their lives, uh, and uh, we, have, we must expect also uh, uh, so, uh, more attacks uh, coming in the future. Having, and, and, of course, that has to be taken very seriously, and it just underlines the... the, the, the so the, the, the difficult situation in Afghanistan. Having said that, oh, add one more thing. Of course, and Kunduz and Helman this week just is a very strong reminder of that. Uh, the presence of Taliban and other groups. Having said that, the, the good news is that the Afghans themselves are able to uh, to, to retake uh, 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 Kunduz within hours or within at least very short time. Uh, uh, they are now uh, taking decisive actions to uh, uh, respond to uh, the attacks we had seen uh, in Helmand. And uh, the Taliban has not been able to hold any, as I say, uh, important towns or, 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 or cities for any long period. So we have seen attacks. We have seen terrorist attacks. Uh, we have seen that they are uh, attacking different cities, but they are not able to hold uh, and to control uh, bigger cities or or any uh, big amount of of, uh, of territory, so uh, so that also in a way illustrates the strength of the 
uh, Afghan army and, and 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 just a couple of years ago this had been out of uh, it, 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 it wouldn't have been possible for the Afghan forces to do that without us di engaging directly in combat now now they are able to do it and now they they are the first they are the first uh, responder um, uh, for instance they are now developing their own air, air forces last time I visited uh, Kabul I visited uh, the the Kaya the Kabul International Airport and there is a training going on of Afghan pilots, Afghan uh, Air Force personnel, so they can do medivac, they can do uh, also airlift, uh, they, can, they can also do some close uh, air support, uh, transportation, so, so actually they are developing also more and more advanced uh, capabilities. Then the link between this meeting and what NATO is doing. Uh, this is a very close link. Because there can be no development without security. There is no way we can mobilize the international community, building schools, building roads, improving uh, infrastructure, uh, health, uh, without security. So a precondition for the efforts of the nations gathered here today to promote economic uh, development in Afghanistan to protect uh, human rights in Afghanistan, the rights of women and children, is security. So, just as security is um, a precondition for development, development is also a precondition for lasting security. So it's a very close link between the efforts of NATO, the decisions we made at the NATO summit in July, and the decisions taken at this conference uh, providing the financial support for economic development in Afghanistan. So we, we work together, we work hand in hand, NATO uh, uh, and the broader international community uh, with the EU and the UN. Uh, thank you guys, I'm afraid we don't have more time, so uh, uh, I hope that you manage to get all your questions in. And, uh, uh, but the answers are so long, that's the problem. <laughs> no, 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 no but, uh, should I say something in Norwegian or you yeah, got I mean, it? Yeah, if you yeah. want, every, uh, the international media can leave and say, John can say a few words. But I can also listen to my Norwegian, but I think you got what you, you needed or... Uh, well, I had uh, one more question. Yeah, yeah. we uh, take it. You want to handle it in But I think it's, uh, we can do it in English because, it in English, yeah, yeah, yeah. because then just, it's for everyone. I just wanted yeah. to ask you about, you know, we have more than one million people uh, internally displaced within Afghanistan. You had numbers yesterday, 200,000, I think, coming from Pakistan. Yeah. And now you possibly can have tens of thousands coming from Europe. And, uh, how worried are you that this could further destabilize the country? One of the important issues discussed in the meeting today uh, uh, is, of course, how uh, the international community uh, with the European Union, with the UN and UN agencies can help Afghanistan uh, so, uh, uh, build the capacity to receive people and also to uh, uh, accommodate internally displaced uh, persons. Uh, and I think actually there is a link between the migrant and refugee crisis in Europe and what we are doing in Afghanistan. Because the more successful we are in um, uh, stabilizing the country uh, uh, and also promoting economic growth uh, and development in the country, the more able Afghanistan is to Partly to uh, as a, to reduce the uh, outflow of migrants and refugees, but also, of course, uh, able to receive uh, uh, people uh, that are returned to Afghanistan. For instance, from Norway, but also from other countries. So, so that was one of the main issues here. How can we help them, uh, enabling them to uh, uh, accommodate uh, uh, refugees, migrants, which are returned to uh, to uh, Afghanistan? That was, I think, that was all. Now then, the last thing is actually, of course, this is also linked to our, our fight against terrorism. Because the main reason why NATO is in Afghanistan is to prevent Afghanistan once again becoming a safe haven for international terrorists. So, so there's a link between the big issues in Europe now and what uh, NATO, uh, the European Union, uh, uh, and the international community is doing in Afghanistan. Thank you so much. Thank you.